Welcome to Tommy Solo's Famous Friends. This is where I get to chat with people that I've connected with over the years in the world of arts and entertainment. And today we're featuring our second Rounding the Corner episode with Rob Reiner from the band Anvil. Welcome to the show again, Rob. Great to be back, Tommy. How you been? Well, I'm feeling a lot better now that there's a light at the end of this tunnel. You know, now that we've got enough people or close to enough people vaccinated to start opening up again. So, man, doesn't that feel good? Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for for 16 months for all this to happen. So it looks promising. I know America's full blown. Europe is definitely already opening up. And uh, I guess Canada will be last for, <laughs> well, maybe Australia. Well, we're on our way. I know I've got a show booked for the Civic Holiday Weekend, August 1st. So good things are coming. Great. Let's hope. So to get started on this, when I called you this morning and asked what you were doing, you said you were working on visas. So that's a good thing. Yeah, we apply for, you know, work visas. You know, we have a tour in 2022 in America, but we got a plan of at least a year ahead for these things. So I'm just doing some paperwork towards that. Right. And let's remind everybody where you were when the pandemic hit and what happened to you guys. Okay, well, that was quite a trip. Oh, that was back in 2020, back in late February and March. We were in Europe. We started, I think, about a 60-day tour. And we were 17 shows into the tour. We were in the UK when Italy shut down, France shut down. You know, it was, we were kind of ahead of all the countries as they were shutting down. Then we got into the UK, and uh, the UK was, I believe, the last country to shut down over there. And they just kept it going, so we kept playing. And the last, I guess, uh, about after 10, 12 shows in the UK, you, know, you start seeing, you know, the crowd started getting a little less because of the lockdown, and people started getting flipped out about COVID. And then it was over, and we got the word that, okay, guys, tourists uh, got to shut down, the world's shutting down, you got to catch a plane and get home ASAP because they're locking the, the world down. It was pretty surreal, to be honest with you. We couldn't, none of us really could believe what was actually happening. I've never been on a tour and then had to run home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that had to be pretty weird for sure. It was a weird trip. And we barely, you know, we almost didn't even get back because of all the, you know, the America, we had flights that connected to the USA, but then uh, the USA shut down all passports except the U.S. ones. It was a lot of looking around at the airport just to get back home, but we made it, and uh, I've been home ever since, <laughs> 16 months. Yeah, what a ride this has been through a very, very dark tunnel, but uh, again, it feels good to see the light finally. So, I know you guys were riding a wave, and you were touring in support of your latest album, uh, Legal At yep. Last, right? Yep, uh, yep, absolutely. And the shows were packed, and you guys were having a great time, and then boom, you got to come home. Yeah, well, we rescheduled all, you know, at that moment, uh, I guess like everybody, you know, we, was, you know, I figured out, okay, what, what the fuck, you know, everything would be shut down for a month or so and everything would get back going again. That was the initial response from most people, only to find out that, no, this is not really going to be uh, turning back on too quick. And that was like, that was a mind blowing there. So what we did is we rescheduled the remaining dates of that tour for last year in the fall. I believe it was in September and October. And then by the time it was getting close, you know, the summertime, I think it was in July of last year, and it was like, no, things ain't opening up. So it got blown right out. And we've been hanging out, but that tour it has been rescheduled for this year, September, October. And at the moment, as I speak to you, it still looks like it's going to happen. That's awesome news. Yeah, boy, what a long wait. But uh, yeah, it's happening, and I know I've got a show at the London International Rib Fest on the Civic Holiday Weekend, August 1st, and that, when I got the call on that one, I did a little jig, and I'm not a dancer, but man, and when I asked you last week that I talked to you about doing this, uh, yeah, 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 we'll think it was. yeah, so I asked you how you felt, and you put it in one word, you said, okay, I do. you said, hallelujah. <laughs> is that what I said? Okay. <laughs> so that's, what, that's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what we're all feeling right now. And uh, I know you, you've got your second well, dose of the vaccine. Yeah, I'm fully vaxxed. And I had no side effects, like nothing. I felt, you know, outside of a small sore arm the first time, I felt nothing. And the second time, uh, even my arm barely got sore. And I felt nothing. I still feel nothing. Yeah. 
But there's other people like, you know, even lips to my bang, you know, he, you know, he had a few days of weirdness after he got his shots. Yeah, but you know, a few days of weirdness beats dying. Yeah. See, like, I'm all with that concept, but you know, I'm also with the concept that life is all about pulling good cards and bad cards. In my case, you know, vaccination was, yeah, protection is a smart thing. It's not a stupid thing, but I got to travel. So there's no way you can travel without having uh, proof that you got jabbed. Yeah. Without the hassle aspect of it. You know, they go like, I'm quarantined people. You got to land here. You got to do 10, 14 day quarantine. We can't go from tour like that. No. And I understand there was actually some vaccine hesitancy in the Anvil band. Yeah, yeah, initially, yeah, there was a little bit, you know, our current bass player guy, you know, he was hesitant about it, but it was basically down to, his reasoning were really sound, but that's, you know, I'm not going to go into any of that, but it was either do what you got to do to travel, or you got to retire from playing, or, you know, you have to retire from international touring, basically, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that was pretty well the decision for now, I mean, like, yeah, whatever happens in 24 months from now, who knows, or whatever. But for the next couple of years, you know, this shit's going to be kind of going on, right? Yeah, and you have to be protected. I mean, it's, it only makes sense. Like you say, some people have died, some haven't. I mean, there have been kids. There was a 12-year-old kid that died from COVID a few months ago. Yeah, absolutely. See, I call it, you know, it's like pulling a bad card. Yeah. You get four cards, let's say, and you pull one, and you, you look at it, and you go, okay, I guess that's me. I'm out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I look at this, you know? So if you've got some protection, that's not a stupid thing. Yeah, yeah. And man, does it feel good to see the shows coming back, really? Yeah. Well, I'm watching all my American peers and uh, a lot of my friends and stuff, and they're all they're rocking. And I'm watching it, and I'm going, you motherfuckers, I want to be out there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, professional envy, right? Oh, boy. I don't really call it envy. It's just like, you know, what the fuck? I live in Canada, man. You know, like, you know we, we're, they're moving slow here with everything, you know? Well, yeah, I get where you're coming from, but I think in this case, it's better to be safe than sorry, really. Because yeah, this is yeah a I know what you mean. Thing. This is a global thing, and we can't control what comes into the country, really, you know? No. Um, and it, no, not fully. That's true. Yeah, so it is what it is. And, you know, we, we are wise to get our shots. You know, the problem with this whole shot thing is, in my, in my humble uh, view, is the thing got politicized initially when it never should have. That's what caused all this crazy nonsense with, you know, oh, man, don't take it, take it, oh, it's poison, it's this, you know, all the dog shit that's out there. It's like so much noise. It's sad. And a lot of people are following the noise, going right down the rabbit hole. And at the end of the day, if there's going to be a problem, it's going to be all the unvaccinated people that are going to cause the problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Because they'll have no protection, and they're going to be, you know, fighting it amongst each other, and, and they're going to get sick, and, you know, and it's all just going to fuck everything up. That's, yep. that's how I feel about it, you know? Yeah, and man, nothing like politicizing a global pandemic. I know I talked to another friend of mine, John McGill, the other day, and he said, you know, this thing would have been over if countries internationally had cooperated if there wasn't a fight over patents on vaccines we could have been done at least six months ago if and he said you know they do it with the space program you know you have russia and china and usa and everybody working together to get into space why not get together and help each other in a public health emergency that's a global pandemic well i guess you know why i think you know why there's a lot of business involved, right? But the way I understand it was, you know, a lot of people were skeptical right from the beginning going, oh man, you know, how can you make a vaccine so quick? But what, you know, what I've learned from real data is that the MRA technology, that's been around and studied and developed for the last 30 years. Yeah. The basic technology has been around for a long time and the COVID type vaccines they've been working on since the SARS outbreak. So that was a long time ago. That was 2003, right? So yeah, I know. I've done a lot of uh, educating myself on like real data, not just dog shit. So I thought so I'm talking. Yep. If somebody wants to debate me on this, they can, but I, I got it all from the real sources. So yeah, they've been doing this for 30 years. So when people say, oh, it's new, man, and it's, they don't know what they're doing with it. It's like, no, I don't see it that way. Like they've been working on it for 30 years. 
the MRE technology is specifically what I'm talking about, right? Right. Yeah. Now, I know that uh, you guys have been working on your new album. Actually, it's all done as far as songwriting. We're going to record it in August. Okay. I was curious as to whether or not you had started the recording process, and if so, how you managed to do that. Now, did you guys write like via video conferencing, or how did you do that? <laughs> Tommy, you got to be kidding me. We have our own private studio here in Toronto, and we got together like a real band at four days a week in a room and wrote the whole album. That's how we spent pandemic time. <laughs> right. So you just kept it safe and clean and did it in person. Yeah, well, you know, we're all in a little bubble. I mean, nobody has COVID. And then so we felt there was no danger going together to a studio to rehearse and, and nothing ever happened. Here we are. Well, that was the good card being pulled, I guess. Yeah, you're right. But like I said, if you're in your own bubble and you don't break out of it, I don't think you're going to really catch it, are you? Yeah, well, my thing is, I don't really know where the other people in my bubble have been. We could talk about that all day, but really, I think the good news is that we are coming to the end. We're rounding the corner, and that feels great to me. Yeah, me too. I've been waiting for months and months for this. I knew it was going to come. You know, my good friend, you know, Miles from Ava Wine, he was trying to convince me a while back there that, you know, this is going to take five years for a to open up. And I just didn't see it his way. Yeah, well, he's pretty opinionated and headstrong, but uh, that yeah. is what it is. And I guess you've learned how to navigate it, and it's all cool. But yeah, people have their opinions. And like you say, I've always followed the science and the real data. That's all we have. So if you can't go with that, then we have zero. I'm not going to listen to some black web blogger making up bullshit and trying to make it clear that this is a real deal. I can't go down. I don't go there. I it just, that's not who I am. Well, you know, I've said to people during this that I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist, but it would be very easy for me to set up a video, you know, a green screen or whatever, and put myself in a lab jacket and wear some glasses and start spouting a bunch of stuff, you know, because I'm a pretty good actor. And if I wanted sure. to get monetized on YouTube, which is what a lot of these idiots, well, they're not really idiots because they're getting paid, right? You know what that's about, monetize your YouTube, and then you yeah. start to get money from it. People will believe anything they see. You know, I could be in a lab coat and like I say, do a video and say, I'm Dr. Solo. And uh, I'm here to tell you that as an insider in the pandemic research team of Kalamazoo, of course. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And people are eating it up. Yep, absolutely. And that's what has caused the problems that we see before us today, where people say, oh, you know, they have these skewed views. And I go, like, what are you talking about? The other day, somebody, a buddy of mine was, whatever, conversation we were talking, and he's going, oh, man, there's millions of people dropping dead like flies from the vaccine, but they're not telling anybody about it. You know <laughs> yeah. Right? And I, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I look at him, I go, are you for real? Like, are you believe that shit? He goes, oh, yeah, man, it's happening everywhere. And I go, oh, you can't have a conversation. Yeah, you can't. And, you know, there, for a while, there were people spreading these videos showing empty waiting rooms in urgent care and so on. Well, yeah, they're empty because you can't have a bunch of people in the same room at the same time, you know, and they can't allow visitors in pandemic times either. So why is the hospital so empty? Well, because... Safety protocols. You don't want to have just have a thousand people visiting their friends and family who have COVID. You know, go for this. Think about it. I'm, I'm somewhat of a simple, logical kind of thinker. If they want to kill the world's population, there's better ways to do it than like this. Yeah. This is a long, drawn-out process, if you get what I'm getting at, right? Like, as opposed to pull the world up, man. Poison the water. You know, yeah. There's a million other things you could do way faster, right? Yeah, and the other thing, people say, oh, you know, it's, it's about, they're going to start tracking me through a microchip. Well, what are you talking no, about? Do you have a smartphone? Exactly. Are you on Facebook yeah, or yeah, Instagram right. or any Twitter or any of that? Everybody know people know where you are all the time. All these people, you know, like Zuckerberg and, right. and so on. There's no way you can avoid being found when you have a smartphone and you're on the internet. So you're absolutely correct. I watched a, an actual scientist talk about the process of inserting a microchip into a human being. In order to have a microchip that would do the job, it has to be, uh, I think it was like a half an inch in diameter would be the smallest that it could be. 
So how are they going to put that on a needle and stick it in your arm without you noticing? Tommy, I got with you, man, on all this. It's, to me, it's just fantasy. Yeah. Well, let's, for a minute, let's talk about what's coming up with Anvil and, and what you guys have planned in the uh, not-too-distant future. Okay. Well, I can tell you what is planned is, you know, we have our, I can't tell you the title of the new record. I'd like to, but I just can't put out yet. But we have a new record that will be recorded in Germany uh, the month of August, a bit of September. And then unless something changes after this phone call, we have a tour set for Europe, 34 shows that were left over from the legal last tour. So we're going to do that. And then we'll be back here uh, in Canada. And then we're going to maybe, and then I've been told that they're going to have venues allowing at least four to 500 people around October, November. So let's just see if that's true. If that is true, then I guess we're going to do some dates locally a little bit. And then next year, we're going to fully try to do some Canadian dates. Then we've got an American tour for June, July, the bit of August. And then we'll go ahead and go back to Europe for October, November, December with the new album uh, in 2022. That sounds awesome, man. I just wanted to touch base with you, Rob, and, and talk about what it felt like to be a full-time musician during the pandemic and how it feels to be coming out of it. And I'm going to thank you once again for taking the time out of your day to do this with me. And until next time, cheers. No problem, Tommy. Always great to talk to you. Well, it's always great to talk to Rob Reiner as well. You know, and I'm so excited to know that so many of my friends have got things on the horizon. Shows are coming back. Records are being made again. This is really feeling like we are rounding the corner. And with that in mind, with us coming to the end of this very dark tunnel, here is, from their latest album, their title track, Legal at Last, and what a breath of fresh air that is.
Tommy Solo's Famous Friends is a one-man production, meaning that I've done all the work, including producing, editing, guest acquisition, etc. All rights reserved. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The theme song for Tommy Solo's Famous Friends was written and recorded by Tommy Solo with a little help from my friends in the night crew. And hey, if you like the show, why not subscribe? Until next time, cheers.